Yeah, Friday. What's up, everybody? Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Focus. I hope everybody's had a great week as we are rounding out our big week of earnings, big company earnings. And, you know, we talked about the fact that with this week, we're not sure what was going to happen. And it was one of those weeks where not a whole lot happened. Um, as we saw the markets go up a little bit, they went down a little bit, but overall they were fairly flat. So we're going to take a look at that today. We're also going to revisit a stock in our stock of the day that we looked at about a month ago. And we're going to look at it again because it's giving us another opportunity. So before we get, but without any further ado, let's dive into the big picture. So the S&P this morning is down about 24 points. Um, we, are, we put in a little bit of a double topping pattern right here at this 4211 high. Um, if we look at it, you know, essentially what our week has been, and that's on our, what our week has basically been, has been this, right? A lot of just not a whole lot of activity. And we're, we're down a little bit on this hourly chart. So looking at this from an hourly time period, you know, we're sitting above uh, a bit of a fair price value area here, area that was resistance acting as support. So keep an eye on this 4170 uh, area uh, as a potential reversal point. For those of you that are a bit more aggressive, I actually think that you've got uh, a supply level above us here that's a pretty clean potential entry um, uh, as a possibility. On an hourly chart, it shows up as uh, this wick over wick area right in here, which is not a bad area for a potential entry. Uh, it actually shows up better on the NASDAQ. So let's move over, slide over and take a look at the NASDAQ. This NASDAQ level here is really a, where it shows up a bit better. Now, we have a couple of levels here that kind of got beaten through, uh, although this one wound up, you know, six candle in you out, things like that. We did have identified a couple of, you know, these wick over wick areas. This one here gave us a nice reversal. This level here gave us a decent reversal. But notice the level on the first wick over wick level, big move up. The second wick over wick level, smaller move up. And so I still have belief that the that this demand level down here is a pretty decent area of demand. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm losing hope, as they say. It's getting weaker and weaker um, as we get down into that region, especially if we're going to get any basing inside that area. So what you might want to do is just switch this to a bit of a confirmation entry as a just in case. And I think that the supply level up here could be one where we see a bit of a reversal. Um, looking at crude oil. So in crude oil, we have a, an area of demand below us in here formed at a pretty decent time of the day in the overnight um, right around 63, that if we get a pullback into that zone on our four-hour chart, we're still in an uptrend. So this is just a big, healthy pullback in the context of our upward trend. Now, does it mean that it's going to hold? Not necessarily. If we get basing inside of here, it could be a bit of weakness. On a, on a smaller scale, smaller time frame, if you want to go down and take a look at it, you know, you could see a reversal happening at some of these levels. My problem with this level here is this big wick up and the, this big wick down followed by this big wick up um, really makes that level a lot less probable uh, and, and, uh, and something I don't know that I would want to lean on quite as much. Now, you do certainly still have this area right here, but this upper wick, which is that long wick up the, right here that we see, was a retest of that level, thus making it a bit weaker and a bit less probable. And so, you know, are there opportunities to go short? Yeah, there are to, to, to engage this move down. It's just not the best entries that I would say are out there. Um, and so you just have to be a bit cautious if you're going to look for those. Uh, I, I don't, I'm not in love with them. Um, I don't hate them, but I'm certainly not in love with them either. And so I'm not being, I'm not going to jump right on them. I might consider this area here on a confirmation entry, um, provided that we come back into here without too much basing. All right. And then last is gold. Now, gold, uh, we had a breakdown line here. And notice this breakdown line, a lot of people would say, oh, well, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a false breakout. No, it's not. It's not a breakout because there was no basing before the level as we just came smoking right through that area like a cheap Cohiba. Um, 
And so now, where's our, our, our next level? Well, I mean, looking at this, that's, there's, there's, a, there's a, you know, kind of a sideways trend, a little bit of a down, I guess you would say, uh, or excuse me, a, a little bit of a downward trend is potential because we got, you know, some lower highs, lower lows, but it's just not really there as of yet. So I don't feel like this is any great trading until we get back down into this area of demand a bit lower. And I think that's where I would pay attention and look for your best possibilities. Um, this area up here, I'm going to remove this one. I do like this area right here. If we get a return back into that region, I think that may be a decent place where we could see a reversal. All right, so those are the levels that I'm looking at today in the big picture, but let's go take a look at our stock of the day as it's a repeat of one we've seen before. All right, well, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Lowe's. Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. Lowe's Companies, Inc., I guess is better. Um, but when I'm looking at Lowe's, what I'm really looking at is the fact that we've got a move up and a pretty nice pullback here, um, which usually gives you a good entry on these kind of pullbacks. Now, we looked at it on March the 22nd right in here for a potential breakout trade. Uh, and if you were less aggressive, you could wait for a pullback into this region. Well, certainly this is a breakout trade that was effective in the Brent, and the pullback never gave us an entry. Um, and so on that, we've, we've, we had a pretty strong move away from that level, for hitting it from 180 up to as high as 210. Now we've got a pullback, and the pullback that we're seeing today, um, if, I, if I just take a look at from here to here, and we put our Fibonacci retracement, it came right to the 23.6 level. Now, interestingly enough, at this 23.6 level, we also have this little bit of sideways in here acting as a bit of demand. And so in the last two days, we've put in a bullish Harami candle. So a bullish Harami candle telling me that it is a, uh, it's a potential reversal candlestick pattern where this bullish candle was completely inside of this bearish candle. Bullish Haramis are not as powerful as bullish engulfing candles, but it is a reversing pattern nonetheless, closing not quite on the high, but, but near the highs. And so if we get higher than, than, than 199.80, so higher than, um, actually, I guess technically it's 199.84, which is the prior, uh, which is Wednesday's uh, red candle day. If we get higher than the high on that day, I think you have an opportunity for an entry. And your stop would go just below the low of this candle. And so in doing it that way, you've got fairly low risk, right? Your, your risk is fairly low in that position. And when you have a stock trading at an all-time high, how high can it go? Well, basically, it can go an unlimited amount. So I think that this could set up for a pretty decent reversal opportunity. The reward to risk on it is pretty clean. And I think that's the, the thing that is most intriguing about this particular opportunity. So... We're heading into the weekend, so anytime we head into the weekend, understand that you've got to remember that if you are willing to take the risk of holding futures over a potential gap weekend, then that's okay. Feel free to do that or hedge it utilizing options. And if you want more to know about that, go to tradersarmy.com. Underneath our free trading videos, we've actually got a class on options on futures for you. So uh, until next week, everybody, hope you guys have a great day. See ya. Hey, thanks for joining us. If you like what we do, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the only way the computers know that you're actually alive and really care. And go to tradersarmy.com today to learn a bit more. And if you want to see some of our other videos, click here in the box.